I have a lot of questions where people ask me if going a particular way on a map or doing a particular move is the right thing. And you know what? There's no right or wrong answer. So that prompted me into doing a new video series. Basically, my thought processes and the decisions I make in certain games in order to answer some of those burning and tricky questions. Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fuji Split. And as I said in the intro, I get a lot of questions aimed at me saying, is this way the right way? Is this uh, the right way to do this, etc, etc. And there is no perfect answer to anything because a lot depends on a lot of things. So that prompted me to do this video series, which is about your decision making during battles because making good decisions or making the right decisions in the heat of the battle generally will lead to a positive outcome, i.e. winning the game. Now, look, I don't profess to be one of the best players in the game. I am average at best, but whilst I may not be pro-level super duper unicorn with amazingly fast reactions, I do think that in some games I make right decisions. And that is the thing about this game. A lot of it is about decisions. So this is me rolling out in the WZ112-2 on my Asian account. Now, I've already seen the team makeup. We'll get to that in another video. And I know that I'm not gonna face a lot of opposition up here at this C cap. It is basically a supremacy game. So I've gone and I've capped the C. Now, I'm in a heavy tank. I know I've got quite good HP. I know that I can really brawl my way along over here and I'm doing that nicely. I've already taken a few hits. I'm trying to sucker them out and you can see that the uh, that the IS is trying to chase me down. Uh, the Chieftain is also trying to chase me down but I know that I can get up here. I can bounce a few shots. I've already bounced 625. I can brawl with both of these tanks pretty nicely and I can push onto the IS and I can give them a hard time. Trying to go for the track shot doesn't work, I'm trying to angle up, get the bounce, and this is what I'm trying to do. Now he's a one shot, I can move in for the kill, get my load, aim for the bottom plate, push him out. Now I've got the Chieftain to contend with, he's got a better reload than me, but one thing I've got is a really good turret. So I'm gonna get up close and personal to him. That way I can still smack him, and he's gonna bounce me. And there you go, he bounces me because I'm now very, very close to him. I can now finish him off and put paid to him. I can now see that there's a T-54, lightweight, trying to roll over the top to chase down our um, T-44. I'm loading, he's gonna present nicely to me, I can get a shot in and take him out. Three tanks of theirs have now gone. It's even Stevens in the tanks. Uh, they've lost three, we've lost three. Our T-44 gets annihilated by the IS. I come round, it's an SU, sorry, put a good shot into him, try to get him tracked, but don't get him tracked. I know that we've got better cap points. We're losing tanks, but we're up on points. I'm gonna basically not angle, I'm gonna go up the hill and narrow my armor down. I'm now gonna face up the SU again prevent him from hurting me, try and get my reload, aim for a, a, a soft spot, and we take kill number four. We're now down to 400 HP. I could, if I wanted to, go rolling in and annihilate those tanks. There's no point. I need to wait for my reload, and I need to try and understand who's the danger target here. Now, the IS-2SU is the lowest hit point target out there, so I'm gonna put a shot into him, and I'm gonna leave him alone because I can now see a stir of a meal coming. I'm gonna come up here, push up, get that oblique angle so he's gonna bounce me. There you go. Now he's a one shot to me, take him out. T49 is gonna roll into my E25, but the IS-2H is a one shot. So I'm just gonna sit here, I'm gonna wait for my aiming circle to come down and I'm gonna take him out. There is kill number six. Now the T49 is basically a two, maybe three shot. I'm gonna roll up, now out the E25, because the E25 has been brawling with him quite nicely, put a shot into him. Now he's a one shot to everybody, 
and the IS, the, the E25 takes it. So that was my decisions making and my thought processes for that game. As you see, we did just shy of 5,000 damage, we took six kills and we get a decent mastery. Then we almost got a Raz. So that's not a bad game, but let's break it down a little bit further. So now we're gonna look at this game, a T57 Heavy here on Port Bay. Now I'm already looking at the makeup of the other team. Now I can see they've got some really good haul down tanks and they've got an E100 and they've got a Tortoise. So I'm expecting them to go towards the B and the C cap. It is a supremacy game. So that is the first most crucial thing that I do when looking at the game. I look at the other side's makeup because that will generally tell me what to expect. So I've already told the team, go to the C cap. I'm expecting our mediums and lights to get over the river, which is what they should be doing, and carry that corner in order to dominate and control the map over that side. I myself am in a T57 Heavy, it's got a great turret, it's got a good gun, despite the fact that if you empty the clip it's got a long reload and it, it dishes out quite a fair amount of damage. So I'm expecting those haul down heavies etc to get over here, so I'm going to rush towards that. Now I've already seen tanks on the minimap popping at the A cap. Now that's telling me that maybe there isn't anything coming over here. Not only that, you can see that our light and mediums have pushed all the way through on the other side. They went to where they should do, and again, nothing popped. So I know nothing is here. That gives me the opportunity to take base and cap advantage by capping C. Now I can see an AMX 30B is coming in to toy with our light tank, the T92. That will give me the opportunity to put shots into him. He's a dangerous tank. And unfortunately, the, the guy driving it is in a bit of trouble here. So I'm allowed to get an, a full clip into him, rippling him down, and now he's out of the game. I can now see on the mini cap that the A cap is exactly where they are going. Now, I've got two choices. I could rush down there if I wanted to, and chances are I will get absolutely annihilated. We've already lost our mouse. We've now lost our 263. We're, you know, we're losing tanks left, right, and center. So, would it be advisable for me to rush down there? We've, we're a tank down. No, it's not. Now, I think he's on the other side. He's not, there's the T92. He's rushing into the middle. Here comes the E100. I can get a shot into him through the bricks, and I do. Now I've got a choice. I've got one shell left. I may as well reload my entire clip. Now again, I could go yellowing and rushing down there and to, to help the two tanks that are down there, but I would be wrecked. So there's no point in me doing that. I'm not camping here. I'm just waiting for my reload, trying to get shots in. I break the track on the T92, and then I take him out. Again, I've only got one shot left. I try to get it into the Conqueror and I break his track. So again, I'm on my long reload. Now it's three against four and I can see that our light tanks are being whittled out. They generally know where I am. I need to get out of dodge. So I go down into the town and I'm going to try and farm a bit of damage here. There's the Conqueror again. I try to He's not focused on me, I get another shot into him, and now I'm going to get a third shot into him, and he's whittled down. The Mark VI is now going to chase me down, I'm in trouble, I need to back away as much as I can, because I'm on a long reload. I'm now going to push up into him and face hug him, try and get his Capola and try and get him to bounce me. He's probably going to switch now to premium ammunition where he will hurt me. I get his Capoli, you can see where the shot went, I get him again. I've got a full clip, I can empty the clip and destroy him before he destroys me. I am now out. Now it's three on one. There's an E100, an IS-7 and a Conqueror. So what am I thinking now? Well, I've lost a third of my hit points and I know the Conqueror is not going to damage me as much as the IS-7. I know that the IS-7 has got trolley armor, so I'm going to aim for the IS-7. He's also got more hit points. So I want to whittle him down as much as possible. 
which I do. He's now a one shot. The Conqueror is now a one shot. They should rush me, but they're worried because they're one shots. So I'm backing away, allowing my load to come back. Now I'm going to push onto the IS-7. I'm going to forget the Conqueror. I'm going to push the IS-7, get him out of the game. He gets a good shot into me. I'm now a one shot, effectively. Conqueror comes around, but I'm on a full clip. I managed to take the Conqueror out. Now I've just got the E-100 to deal with, and he worries me. I have not seen where the E-100 went since he went to the A-cap. Now, I don't want to start rushing around. We have got the points. They've got two caps, but that doesn't worry me at this moment in time, because with me killing the Conqueror and the IS-7, I took 80 points away from them and gained 80 points which means I'm going to accumulate cap points quicker than they will. Only marginally though, you can see we're already at 900, they're at 840. Them having two bases doesn't really help. And um, wow, there is the 100. I did not expect him to be there and he's there because he's AFK. Now he wasn't AFK throughout the game. He went AFK sometime um, during the game. It allows me to farm him. Now, I could go for the cap, but there's no point, because look, I'm getting the points quicker than they are. We are going to win on base points. They're not going to catch us. It's close, but if I did my calculations correctly, we should get it just in time. I'm not going to be able to destroy him with a full clip. I'm going to leave him on a one-shot. It doesn't matter. We get the points anyway. So, that was my thought processes in that game. And as you can see, I decided not to go yellowing in, not to go running around, but to play the game smoothly and more calculated. That gave us the victory, it gave me a mastery. I admit I got very lucky with the E100. I accept that, but sometimes you do get a bit of luck in the game. Anyway, that has been part one of my decision-making process and the thoughts that go through my brain when I'm playing the game in certain matches. I've been Fujit. I hope that's been useful. This is a part one of a new series. So hopefully there'll be more of these to come. So until the next time, guys, I'd like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers. As I've now hit over 5,000. I'd like to say a big thank you to my YouTube members and Patreons, because without you, these videos would be a lot harder to make. Um, and if you've got any decent replays or anything, by all means, wing them across to me, fujitsblitz at gmail.com, or post them to my Discord server. And until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because you know what? That is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.